I'm John Brody, and welcome to Rock Around the World. This week we'll be concluding our three-part series on the state of rock in Great Britain with a show we call Rock World Royalty. It'll focus on the glamour bands, those groups who present a little bit of everything, lights, costumes, theatrics, and sound. The featured group for today is Queen. There'll be an interview with the band and some live recordings as well. Also on tap for today are the newest albums from Sweet, Bebop Deluxe, Nuts, and Cockney Rebel. Don't go away, because we'll be right back. The album that went to number one in England in less than a week, the status quo. Yes, I'm Nine other songs of rock and roll are on the level. The new album from Status Quo. On the level. Honest rock and roll from Status Quo on Capitol Records and Tape. Today, Queen ranks as the top glamour band from England, but somehow they've arrived at their success much faster than usual. In an effort to find out why things happened as they did, Rock Around the World recently had the opportunity to speak with the band and find out the story of their formation. Semi-professional hard rock group, very uh, loose in format, but a few but starting to write songs. Um, split up largely because of bad management. Up just after we released a single in America, strangely enough, we never released a single in our own country. We had a very bad record deal, bad management, the whole lot. And um, we were a little bit disillusioned by the whole thing. But at that time, we met Freddie, who was a friend of our old singer, in fact. And Freddie was full of ideas and convinced that we should try it again in a new format. So Queen was born at that time. It's about four and a half years ago. Um, and at that time we, we concentrated on writing songs, um, doing the, the arrangements, uh, rehearsing and nothing else in fact. And trying um, to find a good bass player. Trying to find a good bass player, which was very hard in those times. We went to about half a dozen. And we eventually found John through some friends and it just clicked. In a, in a matter of hours, you know. Um, so we felt that we had the basis of a good group then, you know, we were all convinced it was going to work. The first time it hit me, this kind of thing, was when we were we were touring with Mott the Hoople, which was the way we started off in, in this country and in America, I mean. Um, and Mott have a very uh, very close contact with the fans. They, they don't treat their fans as something below them, they treat them as something which they share with them. And um, we felt the same kind of thing, you know, we realised that Instead of uh, playing for our own satisfaction, we were going to play for the people. And, and it's something which is very much stuck with us. I think it develops more and more. The more countries you go to and you find a kind of ready-made acceptance with these people, you think, wow, you know, um, the whole thing depends on them. Yeah, in fact, initially, really, I mean, obviously, if you're making uh, music that you write yourself, you do originally, um, you're playing it for yourself initially. Yeah. It's, uh, it's when we go out on the road, you know. It's just, we like to share it with people, that's, that's all we, 